Okay. How about now? Now y'all can hear me now, but that's from that horrible mic up there. Okay, so here's what we're gonna do. I think what happened is that uh, another software has hijacked my mic input. Now I'm gonna see if I cut it off. If that's going to work. Right now, y'all just hearing the mic from the Mevo, which is in the room on the camera. I'm trying to get you through this mic. Uh, I believe we should be able to do that. Uh, I don't see the issue. troubleshoot it because I mean those of you who are here uh, a little choppy but good oh no 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 we're not going with this doo-doo audio I can tell you that right now uh, as I speak to y'all we're not it is not going down like this I have paid too much fucking money for the shit not to work How about that? How about now? How about that? Look at God. See, you just got to press the right button. I'll just be damned. Now it's working. Can y'all hear me? It looked like y'all could hear me because I got my levels bumping right here. So now I'm happy. All right. All right. There we go. There we go. Are you hearing it? I think you should hear it now. All right. I got my head out of my ass. Okay. When I pulled, uh, I think... The music is bigger from this particular output, okay? Uh, I'm still learning the outputs on my mic pre. So, yeah, that's better. That's just good. Okay, now, y'all listen to the music every night. You were here last night. Tell me if the volume is bigger or about the same coming from where this input is coming from. Because I got the... There she is. What up, Unique? Okay. Um, call in in about six minutes, Dougie Fresh. Call in in about six minutes there, Unique. Uh, the sound went off again. No, the sound ain't supposed to be going off again now. Okay. Because I'm looking at y'all. I'm looking at my meters bumping. Y'all can hear me? Y'all can hear me, right? Okay. Yes, you can hear me. Okay, cool. Then. Okay. Good. Then what the hell are you talking about? The sound went out again, Anthony Sullivan? Don't have me chasing my tail now. Okay. Now, let me see. Tell me if this is bigger. Uh, no, because, uh, nigga, that ain't even the song. Okay. Yeah, you dumbass. All right, there we go. I'm going to bring the song up. Uh, 
Might have been slightly louder last night. All right. How's that? Is that better? Okay. Now. Here comes. Here comes the music. I like that. One of these days, you're going to hear popping noise. This will be your head coming out your head. Yeah, I'm going to start using that. It pops. Yeah. All right. Okay. Now. All right, now we roll it. And that was crazy because I had it popping a little earlier. I just took. Ah, it's water. Okay, tonight's show is being brought to you by Spring Water. And. Pineapple Express. Is that what I'm smoking? It is. So, let's get it cracking, y'all. Right. Tonight's show. Uh, I'm gonna set it up. Uh, she's in the room, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, young lady that uh chimes in a great much with a great many like thoughtful comments and commentary. I really dig what she has to say. And then I found out that this young lady, she put it up in here, I thought it was very interesting, is raised or was brought up in a conscious household, as in her parents were, uh, that's all she known since birth. You know, it's not like her parents was named Leonard and Maxine and they were shooting at one another and then they got their shit together and now they are uh, a BB and um foo foo no 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 this has been her experience so I think this is going to lend to a very very interesting show Uh, what up, Jeff? Steve Harvey just killed it on the NFL Honor Show tonight. Oh, that's nice. Um, let me see. 2.02 a.m. and I'm here on Frank White holding it down on the east. How you how you doing, man? That cold snap get you? 
Peace, Uncle G. Live from Stockton, Killer Cali. Yeah, Stockton. It ain't even about 200 people still live in that town, huh? There's a bunch of uh, buildings still standing empty, a bunch of houses and such. Blow fly. Uh, Dan Dana Katie is nine in the morning in Africa. What part of South Africa are you from again, Dad? What it do, Uncle Jeff and Giraffe Paul's family? How's your funkin' teleki? It's well. Okay. Got the sound together? Does everybody let me know my sound wasn't good? Did everybody let me know it is? Checking out the pre-show you did earlier, then off to sleep. Yeah, man. Get your sleep. Very important, Cordell. Peace, brother. Hey, you need saying hi to everybody. Okay, everybody saying hi. I'm getting settled in. It's like a party. It's like a every weekend y'all at your uncle house, but just electronically. This is kind of fly. Yeah, cold as a motherfucker. I know. What up, Biggie Unchained? Yeah, I don't. I don't really follow the NFL at all, ever. And I'd love it. I love it, man. Yeah, Stockton is the epicenter of the housing market crash, bro. Dude. And what's fucked up is you got all these empty houses and all these people living outside. What'd that tell you? You got all this food we throwing away, all these people hungry. what that tell you? It's enough for everybody as long as nobody has to be filthy fucking rich. Which is, I think, socialism. I'm going to have to look at all that shit up. I don't really get into that. Uh, Okay, now, that out of the way, mm. Dixon Boys, what's cracking, yo? Where you at? And, uh, again, uh, That's the number to call in. But don't nobody call in. Don't call in. Uh, oh, that's right. I'm probably typing faster. Like, I'm typing before you see it, because typing is media. Uh, Bellflower, originally from Watts. Okay, cool, man. Look. If y'all making films, bruh, if you need some music, I'll let me. Orion was cracking, bruh. All right. Um, now, Unique, you can call in whenever you're ready. Uh, please... Uh, nobody else call in for right now because I have one line. Uh, but you know what? We can always try. Like, we can try a conference where. calls in and somebody else 
call and then I hit and see if I can put the three of us together. But uh LaRon England. Are you new here, brother? How you doing? L LaRon? Uh let me know if you knew because well I think you might be, but I'm just I want to smoke to you if this is your first time. But uh, that does sound like a question that could be asked by somebody. Yeah, I'll just put it out there. You must be. Bruh, here's my philosophy on weed. It's not like the good shit costs like cocaine. Right? Let me say that again. Let me get some more. It's not like the good shit costs like cocaine, right? I mean, it's not incredibly more expensive than bullshit. So why buy bullshit? Buy less, great shit. Smoke, great, but less. I don't ever nothing. I don't ever smoke nothing but top shelf shit. When I walk in to... I'm a tourist, bro. I like nice shit. I like nice shit. And I like getting it cheap. Uh Uh-oh. There go the phone. Welcome to Giraffe Ball. Oh, that's right. Welcome to Giraffe Balls. Who this? This is... Tanika, oh, a.k.a. Simply Unique. <laughs> what's up, Nick? How you, mama? I'm doing good. I'm doing good. Well, welcome to the show. Um, like I was saying, um, and let me know if I'm not that far off as you introduce yourself to the audience. I was saying, basically, that... Um, What's really special tonight to talk to you about is what it was like to grow up in a conscious house. So if you could just kind of start from the beginning and outline a bit of your growing up for everybody. Go ahead. Uh, First, I want to say thank you for having me on. Oh, sure. Uh, I really appreciate it. Um, So for me, I don't want to go through the whole history, but my mother... My mother was a young mother. It was her, myself, and my brother. Uh, My father wasn't in the household, but he was always a part of my life. Um, And they were cool. So they had an on and off again relationship, but they were really cordial, which is another thing that's kind of different for someone coming from a single parent household. They didn't have the, you know, typical mama, baby daddy drama. Right. And okay, uh, Um, how old are your parents, if if I may ask? Now, yeah, my father is sixty nine, and my father, uh, my mother is fifty nine. Okay, all right, keep going. Okay, uh, so the consciousness, as far as you know, knowing about Black history and the extraordinary things that Black people have done and are capable of doing, really came from my mother. Mm-hmm. On my father's side, his focus was mainly like education and family structure. Um, So my mother was a young parent. So when she had me, she was still in school. She was still in uh, college. And she was going to City College at the time. Okay. uh, When Leonard Jeffries was head of the Black Studies Department. Mm -hmm. Uh, So when I became like, you know, about six, seven years old, I used to go with her to like the different lectures that they were having in the college. Uh-huh. Uh, so that's where I got exposure. And she also had books all over wow. the place. So she had her typical, you know, the love novels, you know, those from the 80s. Mm-hmm. Uh, but she also had a lot of stuff like the miseducation of the Negro, uh, message to the black man, You know, stuff like that is what I was exposed to. And I always grew up with a love of reading. So I was reading stuff like that when I was 9, 10 years old. Well, Uh, um, now, okay. 
Let's go back to when you were nine or ten years old. When did you graduate high school, if I may ask? Uh, my rebirth from high school in Manhattan. So, no, no, no. What year did you come out of high school? What year? Yes. I graduated from high school in 95. Okay, cool, cool, cool. Good and grown, good and grown. Okay. Um, growing up with a really strong knowledge of self. Uh, first, how many sisters and brothers did you find were like you in your your area, just where you grew up? Not many. Okay. Not many at all. Mm-hmm. Okay. So, um, we, we, and 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 uh, we can get back to that. I just wanted to to uh, to to kind of paint a picture of you as like let's just say and remember this is giraffe ball so i'm really high right now let's just say i was drawing a picture of you in uh maybe grammar school uh third fourth grade and i'm shadowing all the children but because of your knowledge of self I'm putting you in pale color. I guess what my question is, is when does the color become sharp in contrast to what you know about yourself with how lost the people are around you? Did that, did that happen like early on, like grade school or high school? Where in that? Yeah, it actually it happened in grade school. Hmm. Um, now, I would say I also had the fortunate experience of I had a lot of, like, strong black female teachers growing up. Okay. Which was also not normal for people in my neighborhood. You might have one or two black teachers, but I actually had a lot. Right. Um, so I remember, like, in first grade, I had a teacher, Miss Jackson, that used to have us watch, like, black documentaries or like Shaka Zulu, we would watch that for movie night instead of like Disney movies. Right, 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 yes. And that is so important to, I don't even believe in planting the seed of self-love. I believe that's already in there. It's things like that that water it and make a person really strong and gravitate toward the love of oneself. Now, um, did you, how did that affect you knowing and dealing with you? I mean, I'm sure you had friends and I would imagine all of them were not as conscious as you. How was that uh, uh, growing up? I mean, knowing what um, you it knew. Was, it was interesting for me because I had, of course, I had friends, but I, of course, I was kind of like an eyeball um, because I love to read. So I always had my books. So we'd be out playing tag and stuff, and I, I play for a little while, but then I want to go sit down and read my book. Right. Um, so I didn't create, like, lasting friendships with a lot of people. It was mm -hmm. like, oh, she's outside. We'll play with her. But we wasn't really knocking on the door to tell me to come outside. Right, right. So it was that type of thing. Like, um, so I was friends with the nerds, but I was also, you know, I'm from the hood, so I was kind of bad when I was outside. Right. You sound uh, like me. That sounds a lot like the way I grew up. I was the king of the nerds. Or no, no, I was not the king of the nerds. I was just way up in them. And growing up, People forget. People get your vernacular confused and think that because you can conjugate a verb and finish a sentence properly that uh, you won't bust a nigga smooth in the face. Exactly. Exactly. That was much of the experience. So, um, yeah, it was, uh, it was... It was interesting for me. And also what I was exposed to was because my mother... You know, she worked, uh, when I was about, let's say, five or six, she worked for a mental health facility mm -hmm. that was owned and operated by a black woman in the Bronx. 
Okay. Um, and she used to take me to work with her all the time. And they uh, used to have, like, fundraisers because, of course, it's a not-for-profit. So she would take me to this stuff cause, basically because she didn't have nobody to watch me. Mm. So I would go to these fundraisers, and I'm exposed to, like, doctors and lawyers and all the people that this woman is trying to get money from. Mm-hmm. So uh, it kind of introduced me to another, like, political-type uh situations where that I got to experience okay. at a really young age. Uh, and then from there, she uh, she left that job and she got a job working for the uh, New York City Department of Juvenile Justice. And this is after she had graduated. So she was like the director of a program. Okay. So I went from being exposed to like doctors and lawyers to actual politicians. So she would take me to like their office parties. I got to meet. Uh, Mayor David Dinkins, which was the first black mayor of New York City. Um, so I got that kind of experience growing up, too. Okay. Um, did you find, and, and as I, you know, some of this stuff, uh, I tread lightly into um because it's it's kind of sacred, in my opinion, how you grew up and and certain things that I may ask of you. So if you say, if you feel me tiptoeing, it's out of respect. Um, did you did you uh, did you find yourself and 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 was it hard if you did find yourself in situations where? either with men, sexually with men, or at crossroads with friends, that your conscious upbringing kept you from going down roads they went? And what was that like, if you can share that? Oh, absolutely. Um, So one of the things that that, uh, happened with me, like even though my mother was brilliant, she's a brilliant woman, like most black people, she dealt with a lot of unhealed trauma mm-hmm. that left, led to some dysfunction. So one of the ways her dysfunction manifested is we moved a lot. Mm. So at one point, we moved from the Bronx. I was actually born in Brooklyn, and then we moved to the Bronx. Most of the time, if people ask me, I'll say I'm from the Bronx because mm-hmm. that's where I spent my teenage years. Mm-hmm. Um, but we moved upstate to Poughkeepsie, New York. And one of my best friends, and she's still my best friend, one of my best friends to this day, she was kind of loose growing up. Okay, yeah. I mean, I'm not saying anything about her that she wouldn't tell you herself. Right, right. So I don't want nobody to think I'm throwing my friend under the bus. Look here, look here. Um, uh, uh, hold that thought for a second. In the words of the comedian Monique, people used to call me loose, but that's not true. I just got friendly <laughs> pussy. My pussy is friendly. <laughs> I love that. But anyway, go ahead. But being that I had such a strong influence from my father and also from my brother, like uh, when we were younger, we weren't really close because of the age difference. He's five years older than me. Right. Uh, but when I became a teenager, we got really close. And he always used to tell me, like, look, at this age, dudes don't want you nothing. I mean, want you for nothing but mm-hmm. trying to get something. So don't even. So I didn't even have boyfriends. So what I did when when I found like boys were trying to come on to me, I got a gay boyfriend. <laughs> like I knew he was gay. He knew he was gay. But of course, we we're like fourteen. Right. He's not coming out. So you so, had a beard. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Y'all was much. bearding back then, okay. <laughs> so that was my way of not even having to deal with boys because I had a gay boyfriend. I know he didn't want nothing. Right. And nobody was going to mess with me because I already had somebody. Okay, 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 okay. You man, you got some real interesting shit. Okay, get, keep going. <laughs> um, but also, my brother did not get the level of consciousness I did growing mm-hmm. up. So my brother was in the streets. Right. So that was another thing that kept boys away because they knew my brother was like, you know, he was a street dude. Yeah. 
Um, so I, I, so I, I'm a lake of well, cap in your ass. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I was pretty, pretty protected from the events of the boys growing up. Okay. Well, let's, let's go back to having a gay boyfriend. How did you find out he was gay and what made him feel the freedom to come up with that, to, to, to come out to you and for y'all to then cook up that shit right there. That's a story <laughs> right there. That's the story. Well, he was, he was a good friend of mine. So we were friends. Like we hung out. We used to, you know, walk to school together and stuff like okay. that. And we had a lot of the same classes. All right. Um, and he was obvious, like he was flaming gay. Okay. <laughs> Anybody that knew him thought he was gay until he's like, nah, like that's my girlfriend. So people left him alone because he used to get bullied for being so feminine. Oh, okay. So I was like, just one day, like joking, I was like, I'm going to tell people you're my boyfriend. He was like, I don't care. Then maybe they'll leave me alone. And that, and that was just it. And did it work? Yeah, it worked. Okay. And his name was Travis. So if Travis, if you ever listen to this, shout out to you. Cause I, I shout out to Travis. <laughs> All right. I mean, that's okay. Man, that's, that's some shit. Because, you know. I'm thinking if I'm a bully, uh, I I, I need some evidence because I'm thinking Travis was like masculine. <laughs> you, you feel me? I'm thinking no. Travis was masculine and you found out that he was gay and you wanted to keep dudes away from you. So you kept his secret. No, everybody knew Travis was gay. So if I'm bullying Travis and all of a sudden Neek is his girlfriend, oh no, nigga, kiss. You too, kiss. Come here. I'm gonna beat your ass if you don't kiss. Cause that nigga, that's you still acting like you was the other day. This is some bullshit. <laughs> <laughs> and that's again, horrible. That's horrible, Travis, if you out there. But that's just what I that's the first thing that came to my mind, nigga. Okay, wait a minute. So you just gonna say that's your girlfriend now? What is she like? Goose? Is she like 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 you know? She like bass? I can't beat you up as long as you touch bass. What the fuck is that? Is where I would be. No, people did question him. Like people did. Like you, we know that ain't really your girlfriend. But again, I had the gangster brother, so oh, they oh, wasn't gonna yeah. take it, but too far. Right? Because because now, yeah, they didn't want you had a everybody had an Omar, and and your brother was was Omar. Yeah, pretty okay. much, yeah. Well, good. Well, this is um, this is something that I think you need to to uh, embrace and pass on. Is that hold on? Now, if I could just interrupt you for sure, a second, sure. um, Mr. Jeffrey Brown, he was gay. Yeah. What? I'm just responding to the person in the chat named Jeffrey Brown. Oh, I'm like, shit. Uh, do I have a brain tumor? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, okay, yeah, yeah. Uh, well, he well, was not interested. Jeff Jeff Brown uh, got in here late. Okay, so uh, let me bring you up to speed, brother. Uh, this sister, Unique, um, brought up the fact one time that she was from birth brought up by conscious parents and I thought that was very interesting. What's up, Ash? The goddess Astrothon Sally in the chat room. Good friend of mine. Very, very wise lady. Um, she brought up that she grew up conscious. So I wanted to know what it was like with parents who were Afrocentric from the giddy up, not like parents that got their shit together so your indoctrination to yourself is mostly European driven before they get their shit together, like most of us like me, like, you know I I enlighten my ancestors, I enlighten those that came before me because 
of the knowledge of self. So uh, to grow up, I always wonder what it would be like to grow up. So we were covering that shit, and if you're missing anything other than that, then nigga, you gonna have to work, go back and watch this shit again. Um, I, I think that's, uh, yeah, like I was saying, you need to embrace this and understand that this is something you really need to actively do is find sisters, young sisters, and try to reach them. Uh, if I may ask, uh, do you do you uh, do you reach out? Do you do you what what do you do with what you do? What you know? Oh, absolutely. So what I'm currently doing is uh, I'm part of a non for profit that we started in Utica, New York, which is where I live. Well, I live outside of Utica, but um, it's called Rebuilding the Village. Uh, and we focus on the uh, education and uh, economic empowerment of black people specifically. Mm-hmm. Um, Utica is a very marginalized city, and it has a long history of racism, which, you know, most places in America does. Um, but the level of consciousness is unbelievably low. I mean, coming from New York, we've always had pockets of consciousness since way back. Right. Um, coming from the city that is. So we, if you're from New York, you call New York City, you know, New York and anything outside of the boroughs is upstate. Right. So being upstate. So if I say New York, I'm talking about the city. Right. Um, but upstate where I am now is, it was shocking how low the level of consciousness was. Um, so I, I really felt compelled to do something. Right. Because, the, you know, the world is moving and black people need to, to get out of this stagnant state. Wow. Well, is there, are there any links to, to where we, to where we can uh, maybe donate or, or, or put input or suggestions or shed light on? Absolutely. So you can reach us at uh, Rebuilding the Village mm-hmm. NY at gmail.com and I'll type that in the chat. Please type that in the chat. And uh, keep us posted, sister, on the, what you, the, the stuff you're doing, uh, how um, however we can help. And um, last question. Um, how do you think, do you think you're, you're, you're being conscious very young? Um, has it, that's too easy a question. Of course it's benefited you. Um, yes. How often have you wrestled with? your conscious self to want to do some bullshit. But you listen to your conscious self and you look back and went, boy, I'm sure glad I was conscious because I, if I wasn't, I, I would have stepped over in that shit. I mean, countless, countless times. So like I said, I was still... In the hood, I still had hood friends, and it was so many opportunities for me to get involved in stuff where, you know, people that I hung out with ended up in jail, ended up in shootouts. Yeah. You know, with, oh, come on, let's go to this party over here. We're going to this house party, you know, in another neighborhood where I know they beefing with the people from my block. Right. But y'all still going to go over there, and I'm like... No, y'all can, I'm good. I'm going to stay. And then you come find out that it was a shootout in the party. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So it, Absolutely. It's countless, countless mm. situations. Or, so, oh, we gonna, we going over here, but we're going to hop this cab real quick. So let's get in the cab. And if nobody knows, if y'all don't know what hopping the cab is, that's just you get in the cab where you get to your destination, you 
jump out oh, and run. Duck out and run. Oh man. <laughs> yeah, he yeah. don't pay. Yeah. Well, um, yeah. I, I, I wow. Well, well, of course, of course, that mama. Well, again, I thank you uh, for calling in. Please continue to contribute and uh, tell your friends. Tell these niggas start bringing some friends into this. Uh, yeah, bring some people in. I mean, I, I I always promote your show to people, but thank it's, you. it's late for a lot of people that I know. Right, right, and, right. And and then the other people that it's not too late for, they just in the bullshit. So, I mean, wow. it's always for cursing, but, you know. Oh, no, this they're is... They're not a, interested in, this is in a swear listening free to stuff zone. like this. This is a swear-free <laughs> zone, baby. Well, you know what? This is a... Uh, uh, this is about uh, preaching to the converted and the needed. So, uh, you know, you you can't you can't force niggas. This is there's gonna be a big divide. You'll see it coming soon. But at any rate, I'm gonna speak about that as soon as I thank you so much and tell you to get the fuck off my phone. I love you. Bye. <laughs> I love you too. Bye. Bye. That was wonderful. Sister Neek, yeah, put put her stuff. Did she put it in the chat? Oh well, she just got off the damn fall. Okay, but yeah, put your put your info in the uh, chat, and let's support this sister, man. Uh, I uh, wow. Oh, no, no worries, mama. No worries at all about having you. Um. I always wondered what it was like because, you know, I grew up. Oh, what's up, Mimi? Oh, yeah, that's right. First, let me say hey to Ash if she's still in here. Ash, let me know if you're in here, because I got something. I got to take you on this little ride. What up, Mimi Williams? Where you been? I ain't seen the Duchess in a minute. Thank you, 40 TV. You still in here? Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I can remember that. Got a horn part running around in my head. I'm gonna lay down in a sec. Uh, I think this is your first time. So welcome. I know it is, cause I'd have been hollering at you in a. Come on. It's my people. This is giraffe balls, where. Me and my cohorts, the people in the room, get high as giraffe balls and talk about whatever. I give out advice, financial advice, from a hustler's perspective. I talk shit. We talk about whatever. And what's up, Black Kingpin? And uh, play my music. Uh, this is... Uh, A part of uh, the new intro music to the Inappropriate Hour, my show on Dash Radio. But to to a, a, a beautiful, funny, smart, ghetto ass sister that is wise. On many, many levels, y'all. 
thing. Look her up on Facebook. I don't know what her Instagram. Put your Instagram and Twitter up here, Ashley. She does some real cool mystical shit. And I don't want to shit on it. As a matter of fact, yeah, Ash, call in. Call in. Uh, uh, hold on. I mean, if you can. through the weekend I was mistaken uh, yes let me see yes 310-773-3475 y'all smoking out there if you're smoking something right now ah they go to phone press one to answer hang up to send call to voicemail welcome to giraffe balls who this Hello. Oh, Jeff. Yo. It's Ash. Hey, what's up, lady? How are you? Ruby and yourself. I am well here. Okay, hold up. Let me uh, let me set set this phone call up. Oh. Okay. Oh yeah, you gotta turn me down, Ash. You gotta turn me down. Hold on. Is that better? Yeah. Yeah. Um. Let me set this phone call up. Uh, those of you in the chat room, uh, sometime, uh, like, you'll find, because that's basically, that's basically what all this Facebook and Instagram shit truly is about, is grouping, uh-huh. b- grouping like thinkers. And... I believe it was through Facebook that she and I met. And the dope, dope, dope science she would drop. I, I'd i have to repeat it. I'd have to, I wound up uh, uh, sending people to it and, and, and pasting it all the damn time. And that's rare for me. And uh, me and my wife got to meet her cool cool sister very deep very wise very spiritual i shudder to use the word psychic we're gonna get off into some of that uh she do some dope shit with the moon i just gotta find a damn time to catch up with her ladies and gentlemen my homie asterisk and sally what's going up lady 
What's good, black people? I'm good, mama. It's been a long time, man. I haven't seen you in a minute. I know. You know, I've been under my rock for a minute. Yeah, up on yeah. My, up on my perch. Now, now, uh, outline yourself uh, for the rest of everybody that don't know you. Ooh. <laughs> the thing I don't like to do is talk about myself. No. Oh. Um, I, you know, just kind of don't. But, you know, I'm an intuitive, because um, you, know, you know how I feel about that word psychic. Right. That's why I was like, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> which, which, okay. Yeah, let me do, okay. Let me take it, let me, let me uh, take it back a few. Instead of you telling about you, um, let me ask you about you. Uh, and then, and then we'll just bring it at little spots in the past up to the present. Cool. Um, when did, when did you know that you had something different? And then when did you know that that something different was a gift and how? Um, so probably around six. Mm hmm. Okay. About six, about six years old. Okay. What? Um, mm -hmm. that ha I, I could see things before they happened. So, mm. and this was something that was remind I was reminded of as an adult. Oh, wow. Um, so like, like your older relative said, girl, you remember yeah. that time when you, Okay, so I'm gonna tell you. I'm gonna take you back to 1971. Okay. Because I, I had a habit of disappearing, okay. and my family would always find me someplace sleep in the back of cars, <laughs> in closets, because I didn't like people. Okay. So, um, one day, my grandparents had a farm in Fontana, California. Okay. And um, I used to go sit. It was a um, a line of eucalyptus trees, mm -hmm. and so I was sitting behind. There was a well, and I was sitting adjacent to the well behind a, um, a eucalyptus tree. Mm -hmm. And it was dinner time, and you know my family. We had a family of musicians, so my cousins would you know get get together in the front yard, plug in their amps and they would play. Anything from the Isley brothers to Led Zeppelin to Jimi Hendrix to Carol King. Right. And so they had wrapped up and everybody's looking for me. <laughs> Nobody okay. can find me. You know, they're looking in all of the usual spots and I'm not there. So my cousin, uh Deborah Caldwell was calling my name, calling my name. And finally, she found me behind this tree. And she said, you didn't hear me calling you? And she said, who are you talking to? And I literally said to her, matter of factly, Isis, you can't see her? Wow. And she looked at me and she was like, and so when she called me in 2003, she reminded me of that. And she said, we're talking 1971. Who in the fuck was talking about ISIS in right. 1971? Right. <laughs> wow. So, um, and then the, another instance at my, uh, another cousin's funeral in 2006, um, they're like family. Um, her name is uh, Nell, walked up to me. And she said, do you remember that night? And this is like 1973. Okay. And so she says, we were getting ready to go to a party. And you blocked the door. And you would not let us leave. And you said, no, you can't leave right now. You can't leave right now. And they were like, little girl, move out the way. And she said, I don't remember who it was. But they said, hey, if little mama's standing in the door, you might want to pay attention. And so my cousin Dolly would, you know, she said, well, she just want to go. You know, she likes hanging out with us. And he said, nah, I'm going to fall back. And since I'm driving, <laughs> y'all got to fall back with me. 
Right. And so after about 10 minutes, 10 or 12, maybe 15 minutes, I moved and said, okay, y'all can leave. When they got to the corner of 127th and Grandy, there had been a four or five car crash. Wow. That had they left, <laughs> They'd have been that they didn't want to, right. Wow. Absolutely. Absolutely. And I, I remembered neither of these events, mm. neither. So, um, but, and then, you know, uh, I can tell you it's probably like around 1984, I just started, I kept having these dreams that I was flying and I didn't understand what was happening. You know what I'm saying? Right. And my, my gift at that point was seeing death before it happened. So standing on the corner, my mom had a real estate office on the corner of Florence and Harvard. And there was a, a, a car wash, had a corner to mm-hmm. that, where all the, the, where all the dope dealers met. You know right. what I'm saying? Got right. the hoopy washed up. And so <clears throat> I stood on the corner talking to one of my god brothers, and I just pointed and I said, he's going to get killed. He's going, this is going to happen to him. This is going to happen to this one, that, you know what I'm saying? And wow. like in, in order. And it was just coming to you. It, yeah, it was just coming to me. But in the order that I said it, it happened. One by one. Damn. And so I just, you know, at that point, I should have invested in Nike because I, I was running now. I don't want no parts of this. None. Right, because this so, is this is actually not something you want. This thing. right, I don't want any part of it. So, my mama started taking me to Sears as a little girl because she knew I was gifted. She just didn't know what it was. So she so, took you. Hey, to, she took you to Sears, nigga. What Sears? Got yeah. To... No Sears. Psychic. She oh, took me to see. oh, girl. Yeah. I thought you meant like <laughs> niggas. No, Sears. not Sears and Roebuck. Right. No, not Sears and Roebuck. This girl is no. psychic. I'm gonna take her to Sears, nigga. Okay, go ahead. Yeah. All right. I'm sorry. Yeah, we're gonna get us some hot peanut. We're gonna right. get our hot bag of get peanuts. Get the little hot peanuts, nigga. <laughs> no, no. Oh, you no, no, no. All right, go ahead, go ahead. Okay. So, it's, all right. So, in 1992. I believe it was 1992, my cousin called me and said, hey, I just went to see this guy. And he said he couldn't see for me until he saw you. And I was like, I'm cool, homie. I don't, I don't you know, I don't, I don't want no parts of that. And she was like, just go. And so I was like, yeah, I, I, you know what I'm saying? Nothing venture, nothing game. And so when I went to see this cat, he's deceased now. His name was Todd. Mm -hmm. So when I walked into his place, he stopped me at the door. And I said, um, he said, stop right there, Glenda. (laughs) And I said, my name ain't Glenda. (laughs) And he said, what's your name? I said, my name is Chris. He said, well, that's not your name either. So I get to call you whatever I want. And right now it's Glenda. And I was like, all right, you know, whatever. So he said, listen. And he walked over to me, handed me these two ginormous quartz crystals. Mm-hmm. He said, I have to neutralize you. And I'm like, okay, here we go with the dog and pony show. All right. And so he said, after about two minutes, he said, okay, you can set those down, come closer. He said, can you do me a favor? And I said, sure. He said, can you raise up your shirt? I said, oh, we're in some freaky shit now. <laughs> right, right. I knew and it. so he looked, right. I was like, here we go. Here we go. And so he says, he said, sweetie, I like what you like. So that's not at all what I'm interested in. Right. So when I raised up my shirt, he just wanted to see, you know, my solar plexus. And he said, oh, my God, wow, 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 wow. Oh, my God, wow, wow, wow. And I was like, I'm looking down like, what? Well, shit, I don't see nothing but my six pack. What, you know what I'm saying? What, what? And he was like, I've never seen someone who had pure white light in their solar plexus. Mm. He said, like, I can literally look into your universe and see, look into your solar plexus, I see the universe. 
And I was like, yeah, uh, okay. You know, I'm like, what, what, what do you do with that? You know what I'm saying? What do you do with that? So right. when I sat down, he said, you really don't know who you are, do you? And so I said what my full name was, my date of birth. You know, I gave my, my stats. Right. And Off he the said, Gregorian no. calendar. Right. And he said, no. And I said, well, who am I? He said, I can't tell you that. He said, what I can tell you is this. He said, you are a goddess. He said, and as long as you stay on the path of light, the world, the gods themselves can rest. Because if you ever get angry enough and venture off in the darkness, the gods themselves will feel you, fear you. And that spooked the shit out of me. I didn't want no parts of that. None. None of it. And so let's fast forward now to about 97 Everything in my life, 98, everything starts falling apart. Like nothing before. I mean, I'm doing real estate investments. I'm managing an NBA player. You know what I'm saying? I'm, right. and I got now, I'm, I'm, I'm managing a comedian. You know what I'm saying? I was like, yeah, no part yeah. of that. None. And this shit just fell a fucking part. And I was like, you know what? I'm going to go on and go with that this guy person wants my attention. And so I went into what I like to call a spiritual cocoon. And I didn't emerge from that cocoon until February 2nd, 2002. Okay. And on that day, that night, I was laying in my bed, typing on my laptop. Mm -hmm. And I looked up and saw my spirit standing at the foot of the bed. And I said, I know I'm being indwelled. Who are you? And she says, I am you. You are me. We are one. I said, that is not answering my question. Who are you? And she said, we are asked to rest. Hmm. And I was like, we are what? <laughs> we are what? And right. she said, we are asked to rest. And she told me, now this is February 2nd, 2002. She told me that there was going to be a, a war in Iraq that the war had, the humans were trying to instigate something that they were ill-prepared for, that there was a section of people that had gotten a hold to ancient texts and they had misinterpreted it, that there were wars to be fought, but they were not in the physical and not war in the human sense of war. It was mm. an etheric war. Mm. And what that, you know, later was explained to me, it was a shift. A par an, uh, an, an impending paradigm shift. Is there, from hold, the on, hold on a second, Ash. Hold on. Mm -hmm. I can hear something in the background that's causing feedback in my headphones. Is there, is there something? Is that better? Yeah. Is that okay, better? there you go. There, yeah, whatever they ask, good. Okay. No. Okay. So where did I leave off at? Um... Uh, there was a shit, not a war of. Oh, uh, that there was an impending. Yeah, there was. There's an impending. There was an impending shift. Right. And as long as you've known me, Jeff, I've been telling you guys that there's a shift. A shift from the par from the patriarchy into the matriarchy. Yes. And so when I hear people, when I was remember, I would say, "This ain't the Matrix. This is the Patrix. This is the the Potter. We're moving from the Potter to the Mater." Right. And so this is why you have all this toxic masculinity because the male ego mm -hmm. feels threatened. It feels its power being snatched. We're moving from the ego into the spirit realm. Right. So you got kids that are coming here that are vibrating at a very high level. So these kids that they're calling autistic, they're not autistic. Thank you. They just vibrate at such a level that they, tele they communicate telepathically. And so, do you remember years ago, Jeff, when I taught you how to Elohim? Mm -hmm. And I told you, this raises your vibration, mm -hmm. and it brings you back into your center, and it puts you in direct connect with your divine source? So, what I have my clients do, my clients that have these kids that have been diagnosed on the autistic spectrum, mm -hmm. is to sit with them and Elohim to them and telepathically tell them, you manifested yourself into in, in, in a period where humans are still communicating audibly. I'm going to need you to use your word. And I tell them, I said, say mom or dad, wh whichever one is doing it. And I can tell you within 
30 minutes of Elohim to them, those kids will say mom, dad, or whatever it is that they've asked them to say, and then they'll continue to communicate. Wow. Wow. Yeah. Well, um... And Elohim, if anybody wants to know, was something that I had never heard the name before because I was not raised and I was not indoctrinated into religion. My father, my biological father, was practicing Buddhism in the late 60s. And he was, you know, head of the Nishiren Shosho, Nam Yohar and Gekyo, Hoban Tan Dan Biji sect. Right, my mother right, right. Was, was, a, was born and raised a Catholic, but by the early 70s, she was heavy into the, the Christian science thing or the science science of the mind not christian science the science of the mind but she never took us to church my father used to take us to um to meetings where okay. you know we would play with you know ray don chong and her brother uh you know we got to meet the jackson five and you know all that but you know we just kids okay you know what i'm saying i mean i could that i still know and can remember from being taught in 1969 at four years old Nam your horn and Gricky Dake your hope and find that DJ. And I asked my daddy, well, I don't want to know no more of this until you can tell me what it means. <laughs> right, 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 right. What am I doing? You know what I'm saying? Yeah, what am I doing? Because, and I was always, words fascinated me. And that's probably why, you know, I'm as good of a writer as I am. Well, because words fascinate me. Now, um, explain if you can, because, and, and, and Here's why. Let, yeah, let me let me start out by saying one of the reasons. And um, wait, hold on to okay. one of your friends. She is simply unique. Can I demonstrate an Elohim? Yes, I can. Oh, oh yeah, and yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Go on to, yeah, they can go on to. I can do it here. Okay. Um, you have to pardon me because my vocals are not the best right now because I'm transitioning out of a sinus. Okay. Thing, but hell, fuck it. If y'all can bear it, I can do it. <laughs> okay. So. You ready? Yeah. All right. So the key is to take three deep breaths and you want to Elohim from your diaphragm. Mm hmm. Okay. So it's Elohim. 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 And you draw the, the heme until you, so the diaphragm is empty. Another deep breath in. Now, when you do this, and I tell people you can do this at any time, there's no, you have to assume the lotus position. Nothing like that. You just, I tell people until you get the hang of it, do not do this while you're driving. Do not. Because it takes, it, it, it zins you. Do you see what I'm saying? It, mm -hmm. it takes you to such a peaceful place that you can be in, in a wakened trance-like state. You, it be, and if you're truly out of, out, of, out of sync, you can feel yourself rock or sway. Hmm. Yeah, you can do I mean, that's li it's literally adjusting and attuning you and raising your freak, adjusting your frequency and raising your vibration to the divine vibration. Okay, so um, how much is too much as in, is this the kind of thing where, because uh, I, I need to, I need to get back to meditation. Is this the kind of thing so where. This is the thing that you do to take you into meditation. Okay. Yes. That's what I was asking. Okay. Um, now, is there a such thing as uh, 10 minutes is enough or an hour is too much or how, how does that work? I just, I'm just going to tell you, you do it until you just stop. There's no, there's no five minutes, two minutes, three, there, there's no time on that. You, hmm. you do it. And if you really, like, really want to feel the, the depth of its power, mm -hmm. now the, the only caveat I'm going to give you is be very mindful of what your thoughts are leading into your Elohim because you will manifest it. 
Hmm. Okay. You will manifest it. Okay. So uh, now back to what I was going to say was do it in water. It, either while you're submerged in water or do it in the shower. And man, man, you talking about walking out feeling like you squeak and clean. Okay, wait a minute now. Uh, oh, you mean like in a bathtub or a shower? Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah, do it like I have clients that they wake up in the morning and to set their intentions for the day. When they're taking a shower, they do their Elohim while they're visualizing their day. You know, what they want to call to, what they want to repel away from. Mm-hmm. This is this is their get down. Wow. Okay. Now and do you I wanna take you back. I wanna take you back real quick. Yeah. Absolutely. Do you remember about four four years ago I told you I saw you with the radio show? Yes. Yes, I do. You were standing outside a comedy club on La Brea. Yes. I came to see you perform. Do you remember that? Yes, I do. That is bananas. That is but uh, uh, I, I think uh, the thing I want to get, and I'm uh, me and the missus have to do uh, separate and together. Uh, I want you to put your information up here so that the cats watching can share this and get in touch with you should they need okay. to. Yeah, my website is down right now because I'm having it rebuilt. Okay. So um, they can go to, um, and I'll type it out, mm-hmm. um, Insights on Facebook. Okay. I don't really do the FB thing. Okay. Uh, on FB for private sessions, they can reach out to me, and you know, uh, for private sessions. Put an email in. Yeah. Um, they can reach out to me at. Um, Ashtoreth Insights, I can spell, at msn.com, or they can call me at 323. I know my phone number, I swear to God I do. (laughs) I just have to know. Six, three, four, six. Bam. Okay. And the video for if they want a deeper explanation as to if, you know in in regards to the um, Eloheming, they can go on to um, they can go on to Astress Insights. There's a video. There's videos of the bonfires I've done in the past. And yes, yes, yes. Speaking you've of not that, missed anything. Slow down. Yeah, you've not missed anything. Uh, uh, where where can they go to see these the videos? Uh, at, on Astress Insights on Facebook. Okay, now uh, that was one of my videos. There. That that really leads me in. I was just about to ask you to explain and break down your bonfires because uh, I keep trying okay, so to get it. I haven't done one. I haven't done one. You haven't missed anything. I haven't been doing them like I should, but that's because I've been in the middle of of renovating my temple. So oh, okay. Yeah, so I I do plan as soon as weather permits. Um, I was really a little tipped at myself for not doing one for the super, you know, new moon. I mean, full moon, lunar eclipse, and another one. Another one will happen, and we will do something then. So full moon to to new moon is the releasing moon because it's waning. That's when you let go. It's the best time to. In relationships, it's the best time to um, take a a stab at letting go of bad habits mm. um, of 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 doing going inward and doing healing work. Okay, mm-hmm. and from new moon to full moon is is your supplication when you do your vision board on the things that you want to call forward. If you've got, you know, you know, because I also do, um, I can teach you how to go into your Akashic records, which are your soul records, which will tell you how long you've been here and what gifts you brought forward wow. and how to call them forward. Okay. So there's that. All you right. know, I do onion peels. Okay, now, 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 
This is and now and these things I would imagine are uh separate from uh the the bonfire uh, uh like yeah. A, yeah okay no at the bon at, yeah, at the bonfires we elohim mm -hmm. i ask people to bring an egg with them um if we're doing uh, um bring an egg with you to the um a new moon ceremony mm -hmm. because you um i'm sorry to the full moon now starting on the new moon you're going to hold that egg every day mm -hmm. for at least three minutes keep it in the refrigerator people we don't want a rotten egg <laughs> but you're going to fill that you're going to fill that that egg up with everything that you want to call forward mm. and then on the day of the full moon when we do the release you throw it into the ocean do you see what i'm saying mm -hmm. and then from the from the from the full moon to the new moon you hold an amethyst every day and you fill it with everything that you want to release and let go because amethyst is a healing stone and it's a protective stone so you want to take and put the pain the, the anguish the bitterness you're going to you're going to put that in that amethyst then come the day okay. of the new moon take it to your nearest body of water and throw it letting it go see now um let me uh, let me put a couple of things out there. One, uh, I am so regretful that Why? our common culture, the common culture we grew up in in our time, led us away from what is divinely ours, which is teaching like, like what you're doing. Uh, when I grew up, um, oh my God, mm -hmm. this is devil worship. This is, uh, we were taught that everything that voodoo and, and, uh, 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 Santeria and, and that other religions practice were all evil other than Christianity. And, Either either you came up in that or out of that. Could you explain your upbringing and how it was was either was it for you coming into this area in your life or against it? What kind of people did you grow up with and that kind of stuff? Um, like I said, I didn't grow up in in a traditional black church family. My, you know, my, my, my grandmother's idea of church was playing Mahalia Jackson and gospel music on Sunday morning. Right. She didn't go to church. She ain't going down Neither. there with them. Right. No, no. My other grandmother watched Catherine Hellman. I believe in miracles. Right. That was her church on Sunday. Mm -hmm. you know, neither of my grandfathers were religious men. Um, so I just, you know, I, I, I didn't have that. And when I did, I can tell you this. I went to Catholic church with uh, uh, some uh, family friends, and I remember thinking to myself, "If if a devil did exist, he lives here. Wow, <laughs> he lives here, right?" And you know, I mean, you know, I went to churches, and I was like, "This is a fucking dog and pony show." Yeah, this Preachers is bullshit. Preachers are doing backflips. Yeah, they're doing backflips off of off of the the podium. What kind of shit is this? So I just didn't. You know what I mean? I, I did. It didn't vibe with me. And then probably around 1989, I, you know, when I was reading books, you know, trying to figure out what is what is this feeling that I'm feeling. Um, and I said, well, maybe I need to start going to church. So I, you know, started going to different churches. And I could tell you one day, I showed up at, um, I pulled up to Faithful Central mm -hmm. back when Dr. Um, Oh, what's his name? Dr. Umer. Omer, I think Bishop his Omer? name. Yeah, Bishop Omer. Mm -hmm. They were over on Hoover. Mm, okay. And I I pulled up in the parking lot and the vine said, Turn around and go home. You are your temple. Wow. And I turned around and went home. Mama. Come on. Well, I sadly came into 
Um, and this is not to say that I have practiced anything other than a relationship with the creator where I admit that he, she, it exists and that I am connected to its infinite, to its infinity, but in a much smaller dynamic than it is. And that I call upon it and I call for good energy from it and to, to keep me giving out good energy. Um, however, I didn't get to this place before the Christian religion got to me. And it was not until I started to study. Because uh, I'm like, you can't tell me ain't no God. I know it's something else drowned there. Because I've had I've well, run into it too many times. So right. that's what I mean when I say had I had we as a people grew up more like you and the people around you, I think things would be better if we had not been so chained to, to the Christian religion. What are your thoughts? Mm-hmm. Well, religion was not given. See, our our spirit, our innate spirituality terrifies white people because they know we are divine links. Right. We are. We we are. We are. We are the parents of the earth. Without us, there's nobody. Okay. Mm-hmm. So, we, the, their version of Christianity was beaten into us to, to quell, to darken our spirit. And this is why you have black people. I mean, it's dying because you got kids coming here going, that's bullshit. That's I want bullshit. no part of it. Yeah. You know yeah. what I'm saying? That's bullshit. And you have a lot of our children that are seeking, you know, the spirituality of the diaspora. And they have to be careful. They have to be very, very careful because as I tell people, the information that I share, I share freely. What cost is my time? Right. That's what cost. These people, you cannot sell divine. You cannot. Divine is not in need of anybody's money. Right. None. And there are, you, as I shared information with you, I didn't say, Jeff, I got some information for you, but so you need to call and make an appointment. Right. You know what I'm saying? I gave that to you. Mm-hmm. Do you see what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. With no strings attached to it. So I, when I move to share, I share. I share. You know, I share, as you know, Jeff, daily on my page. When I see things that are coming, A, you, you might want to look out for this. I don't tell, I don't give time frames because divine doesn't tell time. Well, so um, back to your question as to why it was to darken. I mean, when we beat drums, that terrified them. Wow. That terrified them because drums are, it's a vibration. Right. See, we, we all speak in different ways, Right. Right. So some speak at beta, some speak at alpha, some speak at gamma, some speak at theta. So like Okay, okay, whoa, 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 whoa. Okay. Now uh, if you feel the, the, the license to, and I'm just you mm-hmm. talking to me, you uh I love this shit when you talk over my mm-hmm. head. Um what could if it's okay. Could you break down mm-hmm. what that means? Some speaking alpha, beta, gamma, and beta. Uh, I fucked it up already. Um, Frequency. Oh, no, I'm down with Frequency. it. Okay, so yeah. what is the difference between an alpha, beta, and gamma frequency? Okay, so beta is a low vibrational. Okay. It's low. It's a low vibration. Gamma is a higher frequency. Mm-hmm. Okay. Theta is is like when I Elohim now my voice annoys me but when I Elohim two people they say my voice is very soothing to them mm-hmm. 
So when I'm Eloheming, I'm Eloheming in a theta way, at a theta frequency. Because theta calms. It opens the spirit. It opens the crown chakra. It opens the heart chakra. Okay. Okay. So, um, beta, when you're, when you're listening to somebody communicate in a beta way, you, they, they, you, they, they suck energy. So have you ever been around somebody and they just started talking and you just felt tired? Like, right. I gotta go. I can't, can't be here. Right. Dude, dude. That, 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 yeah, that's, that's beta energy. Gamma energy is, it inspires. Okay. So if you've ever been around somebody and you're like, that's dope. Yeah, I could do that. I could get with that. Or I want to do something similar and tweak a little bit, but I want to do something similar. That's a gamma. That's, that's, that's the gamma frequency. Okay. Okay. You dig? Yeah. I feel, okay. Okay. Now, um, uh, one, tell them, uh, one, are there any books mm-hmm. that you would suggest? Two, again, if do you have it? Uh, like, like, I I owe you a visit. I need to get started. I just been so goddamn busy. Um, <laughs> Let but, me tell you something, Jeff. Hmm. There is no greater, deeper book than the Book of You. Wow. Read that. Wow. Because you are all individuals born at individual times for a reason. Because I'm giving you my, my story. Mm-hmm. There, each of you out there has the story. And that's what can't be taught. You have to read the book of you. You want to read the book of you? Elohim. That's the only thing I can tell you is wow. read the book of you because anything else okay. is you're reading versions. You're reading somebody else's version. That's how religion is born because somebody got a word and wouldn't told it on mountain and said, this is law. Mm. No ma'am, no sir. No ma'am, sir. No. Read the book of you. And how do you read the book of you? You got to write it. And you write with your deed and your actions and your silence. I, I say this all the time. You, there is no faster speed than stillness. Be still. Okay. Uh, okay. Listen. Uh, listen. Uh, uh, uh. Listen. Okay. Uh, hold on. This, that's, that's not the kind of shit you're supposed to say to somebody that is, is high, this high. <laughs> the fastest. I just, took you, I just took you a little higher. The fastest speed. Nigga, you just shot me out of a cannon backwards. <laughs> uh, well, I'm going to tell you, listen, I'm going to tell you what George, what George Clinton said to me. He said, I've met some far out people. I've met some, some far around people. But God damn you far in. Right, right. Right. And that was after a three hour conversation with the great George Clinton. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. The fastest speed is still. Yeah, it's stillness. Yeah. Okay. Oh, okay. I see you, Orion. Jeff knows how I feel about jacket. <laughs> oh my God, that's amazing! Tell everybody where to find you, woman. Again, you can find me at Ashress Insights on Facebook. You can email me at Ashress Insights at msn dot com. You can inbox me on Facebook. Uh, you can call me if you'd like to make an appointment at 323-770-6346. And wow. I promise I, I'm i going to get back to doing, you know, Facebook Lives like I used to do, talking yeah. about relationships. You remember that day I did the, the live about y'all going y'all gonna to stop this bullshit, this, 
this. Either you, either you want a real relation, a real relationship, or you want to re, uh, you want to rehash situation shit, situation. Right. So, because listen, we need love right now, and you need unconditional love. Unconditional love has does not seek to hold, to bind, to tie. Unconditional love loves enough to leave somebody to fuck alone. That's real love. Wow. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. Um, uh, I say your love is truest when it doesn't have to be fed by the person Absolutely. you pointed at. Because um, love is a vibration. It's right. a frequency. Right. Can I feel your love? You can say it, and I feel nothing. Can I feel it, though? Right. Now... See, what? Go ahead, baby. Um, I really got to get this... Uh, here's, here's, here's where my mind's energy is, and I don't step... I don't... Uh, I don't run from it because my grandmother was like this. My grandmother had many gifts that um, were otherworldly. I don't even use the term psychic, just otherworldly. Um, mm-hmm. Here's what I feel is going to happen where we are going as a people. Mm-hmm. Now, I'm a, I'm not ruling out zombies. I'm not ruling out a fucking meteor, but uh, those to the left, I'm saying that there is going to be a grand culling of the ignorant, regardless of color, the ignorant and unfortunately the poor, there is going to be a uh, full court press on uh trying to get at the common man that is not going to entirely work but is going to entirely destroy the way we now do things and we are going to come out and I'm cool with it Uh, you and I will probably be much older in these earth suits but we are going to come out on the other side of this And there will be a civilization on this, on the other side of all of this shit we doing right now in the next 10 years. What do you think about that? I'm going to tell you what was, what was shared with me back in 2008. Okay. In 2008, what was shared with me was that politically one Hillary Clinton would never see the interior of the Oval Office except as a guest of the sitting president. That um, America was going to pull into herself so she could heal. That the rich would become the poor and the poor who deem themselves unworthy shall remain so. Damn. Um, I couldn't now I'm I'm just going to touch upon this. Now you know I don't have any political, you know, uh, affiliations. I don't give a fuck right. about anybody's political party because because of my gifts. And I wanted I wanted to say this to your to your listeners. You are all gifted. Everybody has a gift. Absolutely. Some can see, some can feel, some can hear, some can see, hear, and feel. Some um, are just ultra they're empathic like I can sense disease in people I can feel people's pain I'm empathic um I communicate I can I communicate directly with divine source on occasion people's ancestors will come through like I had a client who came to me and while she was talking to me the veins in my left arm felt like they were going to explode and so I asked her uh your mom, was she an intravenous, is she an intravenous drug user? And she said she was. I said she died of a heroin overdose, but it wasn't just heroin. She had a speed, she speedballed. Wow. 
and her veins literally exploded. And that was exactly how she had passed. Damn. I can tell you, I had a friend of mine, very, very dear friend of mine, like a mother to me. Um, I called her one day out of the blue because she was weighing heavy on my spirit. And I said, I want you to listen to something and you don't have to, you know, verify. You know what I mean? Right. I said, you last week checked yourself into a hotel with the intention of killing yourself. Damn. You wrote letters to your son, I mean, to your daughter and to your husband, checked into that hotel room and you took a handful of pills. And I said, while you were laying on the bed waiting for death, you were told to get up and evacuate your system of those pills that you still had work to do. And you could hear a gnat piss on cotton. That's how quiet it got on the phone. And she said, how do you know that? I said, Did, is that what happened last week? And she said, I, yes, but I want to know how you know that. And I said, have I talked to you? And she said, no. She said, there's only one other person that knows this, and she's in New York. I said, do I know her? No. I said, then how else would I know? Wow. Wow. I really believe yeah. that uh, there are women. So, yes, we are. There, There is a massive paradigm shift. Black people, and when I say black people, all the melanated children on this earth need to collectivize and find some unification. That's why I started that GoFundMe, the community chest. No, I didn't know about it. Yeah, I posted it. I'm going to repost it again because it's, it's my vision is that this is how we collectively network, that we can help each other. As, if one God, we all should have. There should be yes. no such thing as I got, I got mine, you get yours. Nigga, no. No, hell no. So the, my, my vision with the community chest is that if somebody's short, listen, we've all fallen short. Right? I've been homeless before. You know what I'm saying? We've all been short before. So the, the goal is to, you know, you can only come to the community chest every six months. But if somebody's short on a bill, we can help you with that. Right. We'll pay that for you. If somebody's low on their rent or short on their rent, we can help you with that. You know what I'm saying? If somebody up to, you know, needs help with paying their car note this month, up to $575, we will we'll cover that. You know what I'm saying? But we've got to have a pool. So if, you, you know, and if we get enough money in there, somebody wants to start a business, you know, we get the, we get the great minds amongst us to, to look over their business plan. How can we tweak that? Because the thing is, is how do we bring commerce back Absolutely. into our common to into our community well, what is the common good to, to unite us I think um, there is a one you're right about uh, this awakening um, and I want to go back just a little bit um, what you were talking about how we all have gifts some can see hear mm -hmm. and feel some can do all three how yeah. do you one find your gift? Tap into that. And two, how do you elevate them? So you can't engage your ego because egos seek ad, you know, admiration, adulation, right. and adoration. Recognition. I don't. Right. Which is yeah, which is why I don't you ask me to talk about myself, I don't like to. Because I'm not I'm I'm a goddess. I'm a goddess manifest in flesh. Mm. And this is what was, um, there's a, 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 she's a beautiful, wonderful, she's my mentor. She's who gave me the mirror to see myself. Mm -hmm. Her name is um, Reverend, Reverend June Gatlin. Look her up on Facebook. She reads from your book of life. And she can tell you the who, what, when, and where's. She can Bam. Yes, sir. Yes, ma'am, wow. sir. I went to her in 2004 because, again, I was having all kinds of experiences and didn't know what to do. So I was being followed by a Native American spirit that nobody could see but me. And I thought I was losing my mind, which I was. And, and let me say this to your, to your listeners. 
it's okay. You you have more than one fucking mind. When one mind stops serving you, let that motherfucker go. Wow. Let it go. That's what stagnates. Holding on to the tried the truth. Most people are married to their religion because it's ancestor. They believe it to be ancestral. And they it's won't the tradition. They won't let their minds molt. Right. A mind so is, your skin. mind has a skin and it's supposed to shed. The and mold. That, and Absolutely. It's a, and, and you know what? What happens is on the places. Yeah, let me go on and preach this real quick. On the places where you molt. And it comes right off. Those are lessons you have easily learned. When it starts mm-hmm. to sting, that's where you ain't worked on it yet. And it's time for that skin to go. So now, okay, so- that skin, depending upon what you were supposed to learn in the lesson of that mind moat, what you didn't learn is going to hurt you like hell when that skin come off. Okay, so let me let me take that a little bit deeper for you. Yes. And and this is the easy this is the easy thing to, to commit to your memory. Mistakes are unlearned lessons and create an echo chamber. That's why they echo back. Mm. Mistakes are bound to be repeated. A lesson once learned becomes knowledge. Right. A knowledge applied becomes wisdom. Make sense? Oh yeah. So I tell people I've never made a mistake. I've learned some valuable lessons, though. Right. I've said, I've always looked at it like this. Uh, I either, or no, I have not always looked at it like this. In every pursuit, uh, I either win or I learn. Mm Mm-hmm. I uh, um, generally when you when you win, meaning and and I don't mean just in a sport, but that that's fine. Uh, uh, when you pass a test, when you uh, promote, when you are promoted, sometimes when you promote yourself, when good things happen, those good things are a result of what you have learned if these if that good thing is earned that's that's what a win is so a win doesn't add up to much because all it is is you applying wisdom you already have a loss well if damn it i lost somehow then here's an opportunity for me to learn and eventually get this L, whatever it is, weight, uh, 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 anger, um, finance, whatever it is that you're having these L's in that you're trying to get over in the W column. That's about losing. So losing has to happen in order to get fat, in, in order to get forward or higher or ahead. And I've yeah. always, I've always, I've always kind of felt that but never really could voice it until I got older. And mm-hmm. um, But you came into yourself when you were supposed to, darling. Don't ever think mm. that you're lagging or that, you, that you're that you behind. You step into yourself when you're supposed to. Because, see, if you had stepped into this knowledge at an earlier, an earlier, an earlier age, your ego would have engaged it. Wow. And you would have destroyed you. Wow. And then had to rebirth that, not just recreate, but rebirth you. Mm. Wow. See, the ego requires validation. That's a requirement. The ego must be validated. So when I tell people your your ego is your mortal enemy, it is your spiritual enemy. If you want to know what to do. Your, your solar plexus, your gut, your gut is your mind. That is your God mind. That is your goddess mind. It will never mislead you. Wow. As I said on a post the other day, your mind is mindless. Heed your gut. That is your God mind. That is your divine mind. 
The mind is mindless. Heed the gut. I tell you what, that sounds like uh, the title to your book. The mind is mindless. Heed your gut. Yes. That could be a chapter, and you know, I've got I've been writing Asterisk Insights now for fourteen years. Well, uh, at some point, I've got to. I just need somebody to help me put. I I tell people I do the writing. I'm not editing. I I don't I. I, listen, somebody wants to compile it and and, and and get me in contact with a publisher, I'm all for that. But I'm not doing it. I mean, I do so much on a daily basis. There's so much information I'm constantly receiving. You know what I mean? So much con- information yeah. I'm constantly sharing that I just, I don't have the wherewithal to do it. I feel you. But oh, my God. Sometime, uh, and and that that's something I definitely want to talk to you later about. Is how okay. there are times that uh, it's not that I want to turn it off, but mm-hmm. that I want to be able to catch up to it. So I'm filling, I'm filling recorders with it, with uh, uh, writing books full of it. That mm-hmm. l- recently. There has been this bucket of creativity that has flooded my being just recently, like in the past couple of years. Uh, I but your 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 spigot opened. Let me tell you, in 2015. Wow! Really? Now you've got yeah. Your spigot opened. So now what I need you to do is put a tap on that bucket so you don't flood yourself. And I want you to bear this in mind. Every idea that you have ain't for you to bring into ain't, is not for you to bring into fruition. Share it. Because right now you are literally an idea factory. And you are popping out ideas like a crackhead birth and baby. Every nine months. Every nine months. Yes. So I w- write them down, and I want you to honestly look at the ideas and say, this isn't for me, but you know who, th- who could do this? That person. And hand it off. Hmm. That makes so much sense. Um, yeah. Yeah. I got to, yeah, we got to talk, man. We got to talk. Uh, so. You, you got my digits, baby. I, I got you, homie. Um, however you need me, however you need me, you know I'm always here. All right. Well, mama, I'm about to, uh, you have, you came and hit the show over the fence, God damn it! I didn't even, I, I just wanted to holler at you because I really, really had not heard from you in a minute. And uh, is I? Are you in? Are you in the wife thinking of going to Costa Rica, the Dominican Republic? Uh, uh, no, I don't think so. I mean, I mean, I gotta. I, I want you to. I want you to put together a retreat. Okay. In either Costa Rica or Dominican Republic, and call it. It, it has to have to do something with comedy, but from a spiritual aspect. Because listen, Divine is one of the funniest motherfuckers that 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 creation created. I tell people if you want to see a good joke, get naked in the mirror. Right. If you don't think God tells jokes, get naked and get in the mirror. Right. Yeah. So it has to do something. It has to do with something because most comedians are born of trauma. Most comedians are born right. of trauma. And so, as and do this for men, because right now, the the masculine energy is crying for healing. And and maybe we can do this another time. But you know, we always talk about girls and their daddy issues, but we gotta start addressing men and their mommy issues. And that's that's one yes. of the components that's very necessary for the healing, specifically of the black man. 
because most black men are not raised to be men. They're raised to be their mother's man. Wow. Wow. Well, uh, there's a lot of black people in Costa Rica, baby. They're native. Oh yeah, brother. Uh, Costa Rica, man. Costa Rica got some people down there that make seal look like elder barge. They do, do not be deceived. Most, mm-hmm. uh, most Latin, like Puerto Rico, that literally translates to port of riches, which is what yeah. uh, they were getting dropping off slaves there. Well, see, you got to remember, baby, we're native to every land that we've been in. Exactly. So some of us came over on slave ships, but many of us were already here. Already here. And we were taken. Yeah, we were taken from, some were taken from um, from the Americas to Jamaica. And they took some of the natives from Jamaica and brought them here. Mm -hmm. So everywhere that that life has existed on the planet Earth, we were there first. It right. was just new to the Eurasia. See, there's no place called Europe. There's just Eurasia. There's no Middle East. There's just Africa. Okay, okay. There's, all right, all right. There's all right. just Kemet. All right. Kemet is the land of the black. Okay. It's okay. the black land. Here's, here's what's going to happen, young lady. Uh, you're not going to wait to the end of my show and just roll a goddamn fat grenade in here like that and just leave mind fragments and shit out. Okay. You are going to have to let me know what you oh yeah, what are your Thursdays looking like? Uh I'm always open on Thursdays. Uh, from eleven to one? Yeah. Okay. Uh are you available this Thursday at ten thirty in the morning? At 10.30 in the morning, just, you know, call me and give me a reminder. Can you be in Hollywood at 10.30 in the morning? I'm sure I can. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, next Thursday, um, on the inappropriate hour, my guest, Goddess Asterisk on South. We're going to really be chopping it up on some of this. So get y'all questions together uh your ideas together and i'm gonna uh chop it up with her some more next thursday uh as a matter of fact i think that there's so much meat on that bone we can just jump straight off from there in studio so uh i will definitely be uh airing that particular inappropriate hour up here on uh, YouTube. So with that said, Mama, thank you so much for calling. I'm honored to be a service. Oh, always. man, man. And and in love, as with everyone uh, that calls in, I must in love, to, in love tell you to get the fuck off my phone. I'm getting the fuck off your phone. Good night and and greater day, sir. Take care. Wow, man. Kaboom. Don Terrace Young. Jeff Brown is super dope. Big fan. Thank you, Don Terrace. Thank you so much, man. Yeah, Jeff Brown. This lady is a monster, man. And a good friend. I've known her for years. And I met her typing on Facebook because she would be dropping this dope shit. So, yeah, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to refer to her a lot and try to get her some juice, you know. Y'all welcome, man. You welcome, Tamiko. Tamiko, are you new? Oh, yeah. Thank you, bro. Thank you for rolling with me, man. Ain't this a cool place to to spend your Saturday, Don Terrence? 
Dude, you know what? We had a a, a technical issue with the uh, with the mic setup. So, show didn't get started till about eleven twenty, which means I owe y'all fifteen more minutes. In that time, let me see. Thank you, bro, for inviting me on. Thank you to all of you who paid attention, invested interest, and reaped the benefits of Eloheming. Share your experience next Thursday. Oh, yeah. Well, I'm glad y'all dug that, man. Look, share this shit, man. Put it on. I don't see nobody sharing this on their Facebook. Share this shit. Okay. Yes. I need 33 people to share this and link me in it. Can you do that? That's one simple thing. On all your social media, Share this. Get the the YouTube uh, link and share this. We got to get this message out, people. That's a small thing for you to do. I ain't asking for no money yet. Oh, yeah, I'm going to start a GoFundMe. Uh to help build my production facility. Oh, man. Look here. That's who finna call in. Uh, Dollar Bill. You know the number to the show? I ain't know you was in here, man. Uh, it's a bitch it's what I'm trying to get out and make some music but I'm high so I can't remember it's hard to navigate these programs
to that later. Okay. Yeah, don't mind on me. Now I'm back. Uh, I'm glad y'all like this one. Take your weed smelling fingers and press them like that. Funny. Uh, yeah. spot tonight, man. Uh, y'all need to reach her. Uh, and uh, I need y'all to, I need you guys to know something because I'm looking at the way the light is hitting my hair. I need you to not worry about me. My hair is not patchy, falling out. My fade is not fucked up. My hair is very, very soft and very fine. I need to brush it. If I brush it, it'll look totally different. It's like black cotton candy. It's not a bragging time. I wish it was a little nappier sometime. Uh, however, all that said, I thank y'all for hanging in here with me. And I'm going to keep bringing banging shows and if y'all just sit tight I really believe that this is going to be a big thing I'm betting a lot on giraffe balls right now um, and it just so happens that I have really dope friends like Ashtoreth, who I'm going to be at the next bonfire, and we need to talk, so I'm going to call you this week coming. All right. Now, all that said, people, uh, Yeah. All that said. Y'all know what time it is. Man, did I have a ball. This was a goat. Please cut this up and share it. Please give me your tips for how you think I can make the show better. Leave them at Ask Uncle Jeff 
at gmail.com. Your subjects, the stuff you want to talk about. If I hadn't got back to you, charge it to my head and not my heart. I'm on it. I'm on it. Uh, yeah, thank y'all for taking this ride with my little ass. But please, please, please share this, y'all. We gotta grow. We growing. We stumbling forward. But it's a lot of people need to hear this. All right. I love y'all. Peace.